What's up everybody, this is Danny. Today I'm going to be unboxing the brand new 2015 MacBook and look at the hardware, benchmarks, 4K performance tests, and more. This is now available in two configurations. I have the base model with the 1.1 gigahertz core and processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. The Core M makes this the first fanless Mac. This super thin design comes in three different colors, gold, silver, and space gray, and is $12.99 for the base model and $15.99 for the higher end spec. I'm super excited to unbox this thing, so let's crack right into the box and see what comes with the new resurrected MacBook. The packaging is typical Apple with minimal design and lifting the top of the box reveals your brand new MacBook. I chose the space gray color because it has always been a dream of mine to get a space gray MacBook because I love that color in the iPhone. So it's nice to see them break away from the traditional silver. Not too much here in the box, but the first thing that you'll get is the USB Type-C cable, which we'll go over more later on in this video. A packet that I'm sure is full of documentation, and we'll get back to that in just a second. And below that, you get the 29 watt charging brick that looks just about the same as every other MacBook charger out there besides USB-C, and there is nothing else in the box. Getting back to that packet, you will find a quick start guide just in case you need to read this or if you are new to the Mac and have any questions, there's some more information. And then you get some space gray Apple stickers. So I'm assuming color matching stickers are present for the other colors, but this looks pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and take the plastic off of this MacBook with this little pull tab. And wow, this new space gray color is exactly what I expected. So let me tell you guys, this thing looks extremely slick. I'm so glad I got this color. I really hope they will offer this color in the new MacBook Pros and other Mac computers because I absolutely love it. So let's lift the lid on this new MacBook and man, it's so light it almost took the whole laptop with it. And you will find a sheet of foam material that protects the screen and there is the brand new MacBook. And my first impression of the design is wow, this thing is unbelievably thin. It almost doesn't look real. You really have to see one of these in person. The design is like a MacBook Air where it tapers thinner towards the bottom. And here it is on top of a Retina Display MacBook Pro 15 inch for a comparison. Now a cool little quick comparison is versus the Transformer Chi made by Asus, which is a Windows based tablet and laptop combo that was thinner than the MacBook Air and is also powered by the Intel Core M processor. And as you can see, this MacBook is smaller and thinner all the way around. So let me know if you guys wanna see a comparison of these two computers. All right, so let's take a quick look around and do a hardware tour of the new MacBook. And on the right hand side, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone and audio jack and two microphones. And on the left, there is one USB type C port. Yes, just one single port for everything. And this is one of the biggest downsides to this machine for if you wanna do anything besides charge this computer, you're gonna have to buy one of these expensive $79 adapters so you can get access to USB or if you want to output to a monitor. So in my opinion, this is absolutely terrible. I really wish they would have included a second USB-C port. You lose the MagSafe connector with this Type-C connection and there's no LED light to tell you if it's charging or not. And the USB Type-C connection I'm sure is the future of connectivity and this does open up many possibilities including the ability to charge your MacBook with an external battery pack. The design is more uniform on this MacBook. You get color matching on the bottom portion of the display instead of the black gloss. And there is new redesigned all metal hinge, which is also nice. And below that is the strip for the speakers. And they sound much better than I expected them to, especially in this thin frame. The keyboard is also completely redesigned for the MacBook as it uses the new butterfly mechanism versus the traditional scissor mechanism in the older designs and this gives the keyboard a brand new feel. Even though this is a compact laptop, you get as close to a full keyboard as you can get and they just squeezed it in. And the keys for sure have less travel but give you that click when pressing down. It takes some time to get used to but it works well. Below that keyboard, you'll find a new force touch trackpad, which is redesigned to use the Taptic engine, which vibrates and simulates a click, and also has touch sensors to detect a harder press on the trackpad for different types of input. Now this feels really weird at first because you will swear that that trackpad is clicking, but when the MacBook is off, it does nothing. It's really freaky, but it works well. 
This thing is super portable at only two pounds and 13.1 millimeters thin. And here it is next to the iPad mini. It is just shocking when you look at this thing and it's this thin and this light and it's also a computer. It's really impressive when you put it up next to flagship smartphones like the HTC One M9 and the Samsung Galaxy S6 and even Apple's own iPhone 6 Plus. This thing is really thin. It is a design marvel. The display is a 12 inch 2304 by 1440 retina display good for 226 pixels per inch and the display has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio so by default it looks like 1280 by 800 but I like the more space scaling that looks like 1440 by 800. The display though looks really nice it gets fairly bright and the text and images look super crispy. The display is more on the neutral side though and the saturation looks a little bit lower than some of the other MacBook panels that I've seen in the past but nonetheless it's a great looking display. My little gripe about the display is that the bezels are pretty fat on the sides and top and I would like to maybe see a 13 inch display with smaller bezels next time. Also a huge letdown is the front facing camera on the new MacBook. This is a 480p camera. I mean, seriously, this is 2015, and no matter how thin that display is, it won't be good for people who like FaceTime or Skype, which I presume is the audience that Apple is going for. And also, you lose that light up Apple logo on the back. It's very sad. Please bring it back. Anyways, my rant is over. For those of you that are interested in performance, I decided to run some benchmarks for you guys. In Geekbench 3, I got 2461 on single core and 4605 in multi-core. The new SSDs in the new MacBook are very fast. 256 gigabytes are standard and it's upgradable to 512. And as you can see, 460s on the write speeds and over 770 on the read speeds. Just to throw it in, Nova Bench scored 573. Just for kicks, I decided to run Cinebench to test the dual core Core M processor with the Intel 5300 integrated graphics. On OpenGL, I got 18.52 frames per second and the CPU is scored 205. So this is not a powerhouse machine at all when it comes to the raw specs. This laptop was more designed to be portable with a fanless design to get you through everyday normal computing such as watching videos, checking emails, social networks, word processing, and things like that. This is just one expensive computer to do that with. Regardless, the new backlit keyboard is fantastic. All of the keys are individually lit and it takes some time to get used to, but the keyboard does get comfortable. This new force touch trackpad is great. The vibrations feel exactly like clicks and you can control the intensity in the settings. When you're using the force touch, it feels like a secondary click and you'll know when it's activated. There are a few software features that take advantage of this and I will show you now. Instead of clicking on the link like this YouTube video, you can just force touch it and it will open up a little pop-up window within the browser and you can watch it right there. Now force click on a word and it will bring up the dictionary if you don't know what that word means. And in quick time when watching a video, you can scrub through your video with force touch and depends on how hard you press it, it depends on how fast it scrubs. So if you wanna watch a cool video on force touch, I will leave a link to my good friend Dom Esposito's video in the description below so you can learn all about it. Everyday tasks on this MacBook works pretty well, but what about video editing? Well, one of the things that you need to be aware of is if you plan to do any kind of work on this MacBook, you're gonna have to get used to this, adapters and cables everywhere. Just to get some footage onto this machine, I had to use an adapter, an SD card reader, a charger, it's just a mess. So I decided to test the Intel integrated graphics and push it to its limits by cutting some 4K video from my GH4 and surprisingly editing didn't bog it down as much as I thought it would. I mean there were some frame drops while playing back but maybe the upgraded version won't do that. So I suggest you check out Detroit Borg's video on the new MacBook since he has both the base and upgraded model and he'll be performing the same type of test so I'll link his video in the description section below. If you plan on editing 1080p video, I think you'll actually be okay, but 4K, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to do it or not, at least on the base model. I mean, it's usable, but you can see here in the window, even with better performance checked, it is still skipping on playback. I know some were curious about the export time, so I'm gonna export this one minute and 30 second 4K clip that I just quickly edited. I'm gonna speed this process up here so I can save you a little bit of time. 
now it is done. It takes about two minutes and 25 seconds to export a one minute and 30 second clip in 4K. Once the clip was exported, QuickTime absolutely had no problem playing this 4K clip back. No skips or stutters, it just played like butter. So nowhere near as bad as I thought it was gonna be when it comes to performance. I can't comment on the new stack battery technology quite yet for I need to test this a little bit more, but on first impression, the battery life is decent. So I will put this machine through its paces and let you know in a follow-up video. So let me know what you guys want to see on that follow-up video and I hope you enjoy this unboxing and a little mini review of this new MacBook. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more content like this and follow me on Twitter at Super Scientific if you have any questions because I'm there all of the time and I will see you guys in the next video.